Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. During the Eocene, much of the continent of Asia was covered in lush tropical forests that harboured a multitude of animal and plant species. This was a time of great diversification among the major dinosaur lineages, with many novel and unexpected evolutionary transitions taking place. Ancestors of many modern groups were beginning to evolve, living alongside and in the shadows of some of their older Cretaceous stalwarts, like Hadrosaurids, Ceratopsids, and Tyrannosaurs. The Eocene of Asia saw the appearance of the first Simiosauriforms, derived arboreal descendants of Microraptorian dromaeosaurs. The discovery of these animals in the early Eocene deposits of Hunan Province, China, was a surprise given that no Microraptorian fossils had so far been found in Paleogene strata. Given the small size and fragility of these animals, as well as the 45 million year gap between the Aptian Microraptor and the Campanian Hesperonychus, it is not really that shocking to discover Microraptorians that survived undetected into the Cenozoic. What was a shock, however, was the realisation that all Cenozoic Microraptorians were more closely related to early Cretaceous Chinese forms like Gracilliraptor and Microraptor itself. This leaves an incredibly long ghost lineage of about 65 million years for the early Eocene Corvalestes sinensis, along with related genera from Myanmar and Thailand. It can only be assumed that, outside of environments where Lagerstaten could form, these gracile, forest-dwelling animals decomposed rapidly and escaped notice in the fossil record. Middle Eocene deposits in Southeast Asia, China and Mongolia mark the appearance of the first true Simiosauriforms. These entirely arboreal dinosaurs were somewhat different from their Cretaceous ancestors. Some appear to have possessed rather small, leaf-shaped teeth, pointing to a herbivorous or even frugivorous lifestyle. Others had evolved elongated, powerful hind limbs, well suited for leaping. As most remains are only known from teeth and a few scraps of bone, our overall knowledge of these animals is tantalisingly vague. However, clues can be drawn from numerous well-preserved fossil relatives found in breathtaking condition at the Messel site in Germany, but more on that subject another time. Another lineage that continued to thrive in Eocene Asia were the Oviraptorosaurs. Many different families of these successful omnivores have been found in Asia, some of which were closely related to modern forms. The first Cranosaurids and Cryptoraptorids lived during the Middle Eocene in Southeast Asia. Both of these groups continue to thrive today. However, many of these Asian Oviraptorosaurs have no modern descendants and belong to families that are entirely extinct. These include, but are not limited to, the large, robust Brontavids, the slender Cosaraptorids, and the bizarre Durophagus Malioornithids. Avimimids of essentially modern appearance had evolved by the late Eocene, although these animals were still diminutive when compared to their living relatives. There were a wide variety of predators that stalked the tropical forests of the continent. Massive Tyrannosaurids directly descended from the North American T. rex occupied the role of apex predator, a position that they had been dominating since arriving in Asia during the Paleocene. In many cases, Tyrannosaurs of the same genus dwelt in both North America and Asia, a reminder of the land bridge that connected both continents via Beringia. A perfect example of this was the species Phobotyrannus vastator of late Eocene Mongolia, which shared a recent derivation from Phobotyrannus americanus. A similarity not shared with North America were the endemic Allioramoid Tyrannosaurs. While their larger cousins went for sheer size and power, these smaller, leaner predators were cursorial pursuit hunters. Remains of Allioramoids are rare. They seem to have inhabited areas free from large tyrannosaurids, whose juveniles would have competed directly with the Allioramoids for prey. This situation would begin to change when the Oligocene rolled around. Small and medium-sized predator niches were taken exclusively by several groups of dromaeosaurs. Boreoraptorians filled the niche of big cat-like ambush predators. Their stocky and powerful frames used for short bursts of speed and mounting surprise attacks on unsuspecting ornithischians. 
Velociraptorians hunted smaller game in the understory of the forests, while the tiny Sauronithelestines chased insects, small mammals and lizards on increasingly long and slender hind limbs. By the late Eocene, the first members of the modern Canodromiosauria clade had emerged, and within a few million years, island hopped across the Tethys Sea to Africa, where they would later explosively diversify. By the end of the Eocene, Troodontid Troodontans had died out. The only members of this clade present in Asia were the large, browsing Nothrosaurids and the small, beaked Proteoraptor, a recent immigrant from North America. Herbivorous dinosaurs of all kinds browsed on the lush greenery of Asia's tropical forests. Large titanosaurs barged through the foliage, carving wide pathways through the dense jungles. Vast herds of hadrosaurs fed lower to the ground. Both saurolophines and lambiosaurians were present, along with the endemic Asian pathanosaurians that seemed to combine features of both former groups. Ceratopsids were also present with a dizzying array of species. These fell into two broad groups, the originally American Uinterceratopsines and the Asian Sinoceratopsines. Both of these lineages were found in Asia and North America, and avoided competition with each other by inhabiting different ecological niches. Uinterceratopsines tended to be larger and inhabited relatively more open environments, while Sinoceratopsines were smaller and dwelt in dense forests. The former were also defined by their shorter, less elaborate neck frills and more developed brow horns. The latter generally possessed elongated nasal horns and tall, highly elaborate neck frills. In their shadow lived the stocky Leptoceratopsids and the omnivorous Hippogryphoidians, who were both starting to show signs of impending diversification by the end of the period. Smaller herbivores were also found in abundance. Rhododromids and the Pachycephalosaurian Paleocornids darted through the underbrush, attempting to avoid the predatory intentions of dromaeosaurs and Aleoramoid tyrannosaurs. During the late Eocene, the very earliest members of the derived Pachycephalosaurian clade Ankylotarsiforms had appeared in the form of the unassuming Dorsodontids. These small animals were outwardly little different from their contemporaries, being lightweight, speedy bipeds. However, their tooth count was significantly higher than that of other small ornithischians, enabling dorsodontids to chew tougher plant matter more effectively. These adaptations would serve them well in the future. In the muddy creeks and lakes that wound their way through the jungles could be found large semi-aquatic thecellosaurines. These heavy set creatures fed on soft water plants and presumably lived like dinosaurian hippos. By the close of the period, the Thessalosaurines would find their way to North Africa, where their remains have been found in the rich Fayoum deposits of Egypt. Thank you for listening everyone. Next week, I'll be continuing my journey through the speculative Alter Earth project. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio!